Okay, let's go over a quick demo of the IBM Security Identity Manager Desktop Password Reset Assistant. We'll call it DPRA from here on out. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how a user, Active Directory user in this instance, on a uh, Windows 2010 client um, talking to a Windows 2012 R2 domain can actually help themselves when they forgot their password. We have a user here, Jenna James, belongs to this domain and come Monday morning has no idea what her password is. So she simply clicks on the link, IBM Password Reset Assistant. It asks her for her user ID, J James. She clicks next and it presents who is Peter. This is a challenge response question. She entered into the system when registered, so she only knows the answer. The answer is supplied. She's listed with some defaults here. This is going to reset all the passwords that are listed here. She enters the new password. Triple A, triple four, IBM. Triple A, triple four, IBM. She hits submit. It says passwords were successfully sent to ISIM. She now comes back to her screen and enters the password. Triple A, triple four, IBM. She's now given access to the system. She's now managed her own password. She didn't need a help desk. She didn't need anyone else but herself. Okay, now that we've showed you the DPRA and how it works, let's go back and show you how to install it and configure it so this way you can have it running in your environment. So we've already uninstalled the DPRA, so we come back to our standard Windows 10 login. So you note that the link for the IBM Password Desktop Reset Assistant is no longer there. The user can log in now, standard Active Directory user, AAA, 444, IBM. Users allowed to go in. Now, the DPRA is an installation on every user's workstation. You can use a method to have a bulk installation done for every user. The configuration is the same. Um, we'll leave that up to your creative ways of installing. But what we need to do is we need to locate a local binary and we need to run that as an administrator. So when we go on to the system, we'll go on to this PC. On the C drive, I put DPRA Media. There's an executable there. Note there's also one thing that's critically important, which is this certificate. When we get to that section, I'll show you it. So we right click, run as administrator for the executable for the DPRA. Given the uh, this is a lockdown machine, this user has limited rights, I have to be an administrator to do it. So I enter my domain administrative credentials on this workstation, which allows me the authority to install a product. In this case, I'm installing it now. The installer is very basic. It only asks for a few components. We select our default language as English. We then agree to the license, and here we are going to enter the ITEM server host information. So this is the IP address of the server ISIM, 9.72.121.170. The SSL port that my adapter runs on for this WebSphere instance is 9443. This is a default. It can be anything, but the virtual host default host defines this in WebSphere. Now, this is the important part. What you need is a certificate for the ISIM server. So in order to get it, you take your web browser, and in this case, I'll go back to the ISIM login screen, and I'll actually type in the, um, the HTTPS URL to this server. Once you're logged in to the URL, what we need is a certificate file. We select the certificate, say more information, go back and view the certificate, and we look at the details. What we want to do is we want to take this and export that certificate. We'll export that to the desktop, this is the name. The format here is specific. We must go dir format. Save that off. 
transfer that file to your working installation directory and we're going to use that now in the config step. We go here, we're going to choose, I happen to co-locate it in the DPR media folder. I'll select open and we'll hit next. At this point the DPRA will run through its installation, it'll finalize its components, and it will be done. There's no further configuring here at this point. Once we're done with that, we'll close, we'll restart our workstation here so that the DPA installation can be complete, and upon restart we'll have a new icon link in our screen. Here we click on the IBM Password Reset Assistant and now you can leverage it. That's all the installation has. Once you enter that, it prompts you for your challenge response question. If you have the answer to that, it allows you to do a password change. Our new password is going to be Unix greater than DOS. We submit. Password changes were done. We go back to this user. Unix greater than DOS is my new password. Allows me into the system. I've now self-helped managed myself. Okay, wanted to go over some of the configuration options you have with the DPRA. So um, let's open the reg editor. Oops. So let's open the reg history editor. Um, and let's run that as the administrator. We'll enter our credentials. And in here, we'll go to the location here. Let me expand that. So we go to HK Local Machine. We'll go back to Software. We'll go to IBM, we'll go to item, challenge response. So these are the options that we configured and some of the options that we have here. So each one of these are defined in the user guide, but probably the most important one that a lot of people like is the password sync show accounts. So when I first showed you this, it showed me a list of all the accounts that I had as an end user. Right now I just altered this to be false. So when I go back in and do my DPRA request for change password, it's not going to show me any accounts that are listed that I own. So if you have the account set to true, it will show you all of your accounts in Tim. So let me show you how that works. So we'll sign out. Here now, password recessed, reset assistant. Answer your challenge response question. And now it gives me the ability to just enter a password and the system will automatically do all of my endpoint target accounts. Okay. Um, if you set it to true, then it'll list them. So I'll, I'll just do that for you real quick. can see here we'll go back to the registry HQ local machine software IBM challenge response here the key that we want to enable so now it's going to show me all the accounts that I own as a user on the target systems when I do a password change through DPRA, which I think is quite beneficial. This way your end users will know which accounts are being changed. On the other end, I could see where that could be quite confusing as well. Oops. 
So we go here, I don't know. Once you answer your challenge, now you can see the menu item here is given to you for your password change. So again, that's just a short description of where it is. Okay, so we've gone through the demo of what the product is, um, how to install it and configure it, showed you some of the options of it. Uh, now let's show you how to install it. Um, so let's log in as the uh, workstation user. And um, of course an administrator would only have rights to uninstall it. So let's go ahead and look and run the uninstaller. So we'll go on to um, this PC and we'll go to the C drive and you see a desktop password reset assistant folder um, uninstaller here there run the uninstaller as an administrator okay um, the uninstall wise will come up it'll ask you to run the uninstaller and it's going to go for it and get rid of it so you see everything that's getting rid of there once it's done select done um, it's going to dump you out of this folder because those files are now gone. Uh, we go back to the C drive. We can remove that folder. And um, I always will just go back to the registry and make sure it's gone as well. So that when we go back to HK Local Machine, Software, IBM, it's no longer there. Okay? The uninstaller got rid of it. We just confirmed it. So now when you go out here and you uh, reboot this machine when we come back in it will have nothing left of DPRA so that's what we want so we go back in now login as our user units greater than DOS uh, what was my password? I wish I had the DPRA um, I believe it was um, Unix greater than DOS. So user logs in. There is no DPRA on this machine anymore. She didn't have an option. Um, that's how you uninstall the product. So you can confirm the folders. Um, if you just looked at the uh, folder structure again, uh, C drive is where we had it, this PC in the media. DPRA media is the install app, not the uninstaller. Um, Let's go ahead and just reinstall this for us. Uh, run as administrator. We want the DPRA back here. DPRA install will go. This will be a completely vanilla install here from start to finish. I've already highlighted it in the first part of this demo here, so I'm just going to run through it. It's going to ask me for a couple of choice details here. Um, clarify here, this is the iSIM server. Uh, this earlier I actually said it was the adapter. This is not the adapter. This is the SSL port for the WebSphere instance that's running. 9443 is the default for WebSphere. Um, might be a good question to answer here. What if you have a WebSphere cluster? Well, this will be the URL to whatever is getting you out there. If it's the HTTP server that's redirecting you to that, that's fine, as long as we are listening on the SSL port. Um, if it's a load balancer or some sort of VIP, would work as well. Um, we're going to choose that cert file, which we uh, got off of the browser. Um, in my example, I use the Mozilla browser. Um, have more luck with that. And... Um, that works best for me and we'll run install so DPRA will do its thing here your environment settings are all being done once it's done the DLL is in place the folder structure is there you have DPRA now installed on this PC um, we can go validate the file note the folder is there again and um, here are some details to it um, if you want to know anything about it, the PDF material that comes with the product is probably the best resource for it. Um, so we uh, sign out here. When we sign back in as our user, we can see that the uh, user account now will have an option for the DPRA. Um, and what I want to do is actually just show you it all the way through from the audit trail. 
perspective in Tim. So I enabled this because I like that set. Tells me I have all these three accounts. So you have 80 on 165, that's Active Directory, the item server, the web interface you log into the product, and this Red Hat Enterprise 6 server. So I'll hit next. I'm going to give it a new password of AAA, triple four, IBM, triple A, triple four, IBM, and I'm going to submit that. Okay, so now my user um, can get in with triple A, triple four, IBM. Oops, I might have fat fingered that. Okay, that's good. So user worked, I can get into AD. So what did Tim do behind the scenes again? Here? If I go to the ITIM manager account, enter the password correct um, I can look the system and if I look at the audit trail for view all request I can see that in this case right now I had a multiple change multiple password change I had a change password for multiple accounts done when I l expand that, I see all the accounts that were changed. Here's the AD account on 165, Active Directory Domain. Here is my password change for the item service web interface. And here's my password change for Red Hat service. So this user has those three accounts. If I pull up the user here, uh, might be some good information to show you. Um, this user is a user in the item system, active. If I look at the accounts that this user has, I see that they have item, AD, and Red Hat. Remember, when we enabled the registry setting to show you the accounts, it showed you them. Those are the exact same accounts you'll see in the item interface. So that's how the password change goes full circle. Ultimately, you end up with a DPRA installed on the user's workstation. It's an admin-defined install. It has to install on every workstation. The user um, must be a user that lives inside of iSIM, and they must have their challenge response questions met so that they can be authenticated, validated, and allow their password change to be sent through the system. All right, that's all the demo has. Thank <music> you.